Lord up because to worship is to live. We live to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. So with our voices, with our hands, with our total being, we offer worship. We bless the name of our Lord today. Whereby we are reminded of the witness of David, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be upon my lips. Just last week, we were reminded by the Psalter who declared, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. I worship to live, and I live to worship. Oh, bless God's name. Good morning, beloved. Good morning to each of you who are tuned in, and for the few that are here in the sanctuary, God bless you, Reverend Massey, Reverend Gonshay, and for our male team of praise and worship leaders and singers, uh, musicians, and the sound crew, we praise God for your service today. And I want to echo, as Kim stated, uh, blessings unto all of the women and men who serve in the Universal Church, but particular those who serve here at Union Branch Baptist Church, our ministerial staff, our associate ministers. We're looking forward to being able to bless you and love on you and let you know that your service here in the name of our Lord is appreciated during this month of clergy appreciation. And certainly we continue to pray for and lift up those who stand in need of a second touch second wind, new and fresh inspiration, those whose spirits have seemingly been depleted in recent days due to the weight of their circumstances seemingly growing day by day, for those who grieve deeply due to the loss of loved ones or due to the loss of one's own sense of physicality and health, finances, whatever it may very well be believing that God will speak now and for those of us who choose to hear with an ear of faith, we shall be blessed. I thank God for days such as today because it brings balance, you know, certainly can get us over uh, the hill and over the mountain and over the trouble, but it's a blessing to know that we have such rich privilege receive as well a word from the Lord that will keep us afloat and sustain us as we make our way over the next mountain or through the next valley. Worship can you know, keep you half sane. You know. This past Tuesday, and I'm going to say more as we prepare to enter uh, the reading of the scripture and the proclamation, but this past Wednesday, I'm sorry, uh, doing um, our weekly Bible study and this current series um, ministerial staff they are partnering some deacons they're going to be partnering with the pastor as we teach together as a reflection of what we hear and what we receive on Sunday morning so this past Wednesday was a reflection of the previous Sunday and Reverend Massey actually led and shared in that lesson and we were reflecting upon once again how we are compelled and how we are moved by the gracious hand and the mercy of God to render back unto God such praise and then as I say now once again I believe sometimes the reason why many of us are on the verge of cracking up is because we are choosing to bottle up too much weight and too much weary and what the sanctuary provides unto us, what worship provides unto us is an opportunity, to, yes, to give God the praise that God is due, but it also provides unto us an opportunity to exhale, to release. You know, as a, as a matter of fact, if you can't holler in the church, I don't know where you can holler. And sometimes, that was, you know, it makes me want to holler. 
this life that we live, but also considering how good God has been to us in the midst of it, it makes me want to holler, you know. So we say hallelujah. We give God glory, and we are blessed to do so you know, in the context of worship. So as we consider those words, we now turn to the word. The gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Verses 46 through 52. The gospel according to Mark, the 10th chapter. Verses 46 through 52. And it reads, then they came to Jericho as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city. A blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. As he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet, he's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you, Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God shall last forever. Reverend Massey, Reverend Gonche, Brother Ernie, we trust that the Lord will help us during this hour through this scripture and this text. I can't see you, but I can hear you. Gracious God, bless us now as only you can. Continue to move in our midst and minister unto our spirits. Some of our weary souls, God, cause us not to fret, but be encouraged. Because although our circumstances might seemingly be prevailing, God, you're still speaking. You're still present. You're still passing through and passing our way. So bless us now in the hearing of thy word <clears throat> and speak now through this earthen vessel so that your name is glorified as we believe you will edify and lift up this your church. God, this is our prayer and we ask it all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and those of us who love him say amen. Amen. I can't see you, but I can hear you. My beloved, during this present time and age when we are made to embrace the creative genius of God and that of God extending unto us through our own intuitive giftedness and imagination, such advancement in telecommunications and technology that in the midst of being made to socially distance, we are still able to connect virtually obviously, but also that which uh, predates most religious contexts and that of teleconferencing. On Tuesday, each Tuesday morning, we dial in, we call from our cell phones, from our house phones to connect with one another as we seek to connect with our creator, Parker, in prayer. We come together as a body of Christ we dial that particular toll-free number and tune in and we first and foremost lift up scripture and then on that line we share praise reports encouraging 
someone on this week uh, that the Lord has responded in light of what we petitioned under God in previous weeks. And then before, of course, uh, we choose to offer unto God uh, a, 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 a words uh, suggestive of what we need and what de we desire of the Lord, again, we give God thanks for what God has already done. Then we labor with one another on that phone line, asking of individuals to bring before the Lord and one another their earnest desire. What is it that they desire for God to do or create in the midst of perhaps their mayhem and their madness? What is it that you will have God to respond to as far as it relates to your petition, your prayer, and your supplication in a favorable way? And we openly and, and, and unapologetically and without much pride share uh, from the depths of our being what it is uh, that we need at that hour. We, we are on the prayer call line. And although there are those who uh, choose to acknowledge who they are on that line, uh, the reality is that we don't know who is speaking unless we are familiar with their voices. You see, because while we're on the prayer line, we can't see one another. We're only relying upon the hearing of one's witness, one's word, one's praise report, and one's prayer request. But being that by the grace of God, we have spent some time together. We have been laboring with one another. There are oftentimes when one chooses not to even announce who they are or pronounce their pedigree because we are connected in a kindred spirit by way of the Christ who was crucified on Calvary's cross for us. And we are now this fictive family of Christ that's been extended grace unto God and we are bound together in such fellowship, I'm able to still acknowledge or know in fact who it is that is speaking. It is an amazing that even with this gift of teleconferencing, just as we have the gift of virtual sanctuaries now by way of streaming, uh, uh, that, that there, we are at a distance, but, but yet one thing that we can do is still hear one another when we choose to pick up the line or call one another or even call in on their prayer line. Where am I going? The Bible helps us to understand that as much as in this postmodern world we desire to be able to not only grasp all things but seemingly control all things and subsequently or consequently individuals have walked away from faith in general because uh, they cannot fully capture and therefore control the divine of who God is. Because at the end of the day, uh, God, yes, is eternal, but God is invisible, who shows up in spirit and the form and the manifestation of what uh, Augustine said, invisible uh, grace made visible. That the word of God shares with us that that we have to choose to exercise and practice faith in that of connecting with God and receiving the bountiful benefits of one who's a beneficiary or one who chooses to follow the Lord by way of having such faith, believing without seeing. The scripture read in your hearing shares a word with us because as the Lord Jesus Christ and his followers were passing through that ancient city of Jericho that there along the roadside was a brother, a brother who was now positioned in the place of being a professional beggar. Why? Because he was blind and depended upon others. 
Hear this now. The Bible shares of us that Jesus was traversing. Jesus was transitioning. Jesus was moving, y'all. And that alone should have caused us to be encouraged this morning because some of us have a tendency to lean to some type of dormant uh, and some type of dated theology that will suggest that the Lord uh, or God and even Christology in that of Jesus uh, seems to only dwell in certain places but I'm mighty glad that God proves that God is omnipresent in all places at all times so it encourages me that encourages me that even when I am in a, a situation that causes me to reside in a location uh, that does not necessarily benefit my being uh, that I ought to be encouraged because we serve a savior who shows up in all places Bible says that Jesus was passing through uh, and there along the roadside outside of the city, outside the gates of Jericho, as he uh, approached Jericho, uh, he, he's encounter, he encounters a, a brother named Bartimaeus. Look at the text, y'all. Look at the location. He's on the roadside. Outside of Jericho. He, he's there on the roadside near the ditch. You know, near, near, near the thicket, near uh, the place of residing there where others would dare to relegate you or choose to have you positioned there uh, because of your uh, social status or your situation that uh, you're not in their sight deserving to be in the city or deserving to be in such a place uh, of, of, of comfort and accommodation but you're left there alongside uh, of the roadside. This brother is left there in that unique location, however, where others may have chosen to discard him, but it's oftentimes the place where your blessing passes through. It's amazing how the place where individuals will dump and ditch you is exactly where the divine chooses to show up. Isn't it amazing how after one is made to spend time in a rehabilitation center for some type of substance abuse or in the hospital because now what has a hold of them physically cannot be attended to or, or there's no remedy and grandmother's cupboard uh, so you're dropped off or you're made to be somewhere that you don't even desire to be a place of uh, 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 endless hope but yet it is there where you oftentimes find the help uh, that you need. I, I've heard from many sisters and brothers as well that have been made to spend time uh, in some form of incarceration uh, and oftentimes their testimony is uh, it wasn't until I hit rock bottom that I was able to come to myself and get myself together. But in reality it wasn't just you hitting rock bottom. It was the reality that God spends time uh, in the muck in the mire and God resides not only over yonder in that beyond that banister of pure godliness uh, but we serve a God uh, who's sacramental we serve a God that does not mind getting involved in human affairs we we serve a God that goes into those places uh, that a lot of church and pseudo sanctified folk don't like to spend time in you, you know you what we spend a God that doesn't mind stopping by the liquor house or the crack house or the whore house in order to redeem and rescue those whom we have dropped off I'm talking about the location it's unique because he's left there by others but it's exactly where the Lord shows up Again, taking into account the location of Lamar, we, we realize his situation. He's dropped off because the brother, brother is blind. He has a loss of sight. He's without sight, without perception. His vision is compromised. You know, not being able to be fully aware optically what's going on. 
not being able to necessarily grasp the fullness of all reality that is among him or around him. He has a situation that relegates him to that location. The brother is blind. And I know oftentimes we like to leap and say and suggest analogically that yes, he was also spiritually blind or we find ourselves being physically blind. But let's not dismiss the reality of the physiological plight that he was subject to. In other words, there's some folk in here and there's some folk out there that we are sick for real, y'all. That there's a real pain or there's a real ailment or there's a real diagnosis that is evident. And yes, spiritual malnourishment and spiritual uh, uh, maladies are, 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 are real as well. But, but the, the point that we're trying to press is that he has a situation, he's blind, and, and guess what? Seemingly everyone knows it. And he's left there struggling to survive because he's not able to earn such a living, not able to attend to his needs or his own personal welfare. So therefore, it, 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 it subjects him to the occupation of being a beggar. This brother is a beggar. His living is based upon being dependent upon the alms given or the benevolence of others who might pass by. The pity of people who are possessing and making their way to those particular places they choose to be. If, if they are willing to extend a few coins to him, then, then he himself will perhaps have enough resources to attend to his needs. But what's so unique again, uh, Paul, is that, that this brother's name is Bartimaeus, that, that he is the son bar of Timaeus. He, he is the son of Timaeus, son of Timaeus, just like Barabbas, son of Abba, son of the father. He's a father's son. He is the son, hear this now in the Greek, of one who is known to have honor. He is the son of honor. Timaeus, the son of Timaeus. Barmaeus, the son of honor. But yet he is made to beg. Sometimes Sunday's intention is to burst the bubble, bubble that will cause some of us to assume a posture of piety and pride as if we have always been on top or we have always made it. Or for that matter, uh, we are exempt from the potential of even as being made to spend a few nights on the roadside. But Bartimaeus was the son of one of honor, but yet now he's made to bad. brothers on the roadside crying out you were raised right your mother and your father trained you up in the way you ought to go so that as you got older you would not depart from it and that's the only reason why we are back in fellowship right now is because we were trained up in the way we ought to go, but along the way, we may have found ourselves, even persons of families that held such honor and believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and, and prayed over us and caused us to develop such a devotional life ourselves, uh, even those who love the Lord find themselves being left on the roadside. Here's the thing, in spite of his location and situation and how he was made to embrace this occupation of a beggar, even one who's known as the son of honor, the son of Timaeus, he helps us know our responsibility and our own recovery and our own rebounding and our own proverbial resurrection because here lies his participation. The Bible says that 
he was there on that roadside and he was blind. Could not see what was going on. But the text clearly teaches us, Lazarus, that he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. Not only do we, yes, oftentimes take for granted what we possess in hand because we're so focused on what we lack, materially speaking, but likewise, in the same manner, we sometimes take for granted what we still possess in spirit, in body. He could not see he lacked sight or vision. But you know, oftentimes, those brothers and sisters, you know, when, when there's one sense that is seemingly compromised, the other overcompensates and become heightened. He could not see. But in the midst of all of the commotion, he still could hear. And the scripture says he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. So apparently, what he heard on that day wasn't his first time hearing something about Jesus. He heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. There was a million seen who this person that was now passing by and at some point in time he must have heard the testimonies and the witness of others, women and men who had ailments in their bodies and those who were famished but somehow, some way that prophet, that preacher from the backwoods of Bethlehem was able to meet their needs. He heard. Here lies his participation, which suggests, as Paul says, we have to get to the point that we learn to work out our own salvation. Yeah. My pastor, have you heard me say this before, the Reverend Angelo Verdes Chapman calls it the transformative anthropomorphic factor that, you know, you do your part and God will do the rest. Yeah. That's grandmama theology. You take one step, and God will take two, three, or four. You do your part and God will do the rest. Again, as Paul says, learn to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. He could not see, but he heard something. He could not see, but he could hear. But not only could he hear, the Bible says that he could speak. His ears, his eyes may have been shut. But his ears and his mouth were able to not only hear, but also make an utterance unto the Lord. And he cried out unto the Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. He gets it, y'all. He hears the word of God, and we know that faith comes by way of hearing Hearing the word of God, he could not see the face of the Lord, but he heard his voice. He cried out, he implored unto the Lord. And hear this now, the one who was subject to the occupation of being a beggar and relegated or made to reside in that location on the roadside outside of Jericho based upon his situation of being blind is now being encouraged to hush. It's amazing how we have this a tendency of this proclivity to also make judgment of brothers and sisters uh, who are in need of aid or correction, but when they show up and choose to shout out what it is that they stand in need of, uh, uh, we suggest that they are uh, 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 they are uh, they are not 
properly handling themselves or, or their decorum is less than appropriate. But the Bible lets us know uh, that when you have been in a condition or facing uh, a situation that has caused you to reside in such a location that persons will pass you by and you're made to only rely upon their pity as opposed to God's mercy when you hear that something is near and something is happening and the one who is able to change your ordeal is near you don't mind crying out he says son of David have mercy on me he tried to shut him up but he shouted all that much more he did what the temptations did or said and sung by David Ruffin. He said, I know you want to leave me, but I refuse to let you go. And if I have to beg and plead for your sympathy, I don't mind because you mean that much to me. You know, y'all remember, ain't too proud to beg. Sweet babe. Please don't leave me, Lord. Don't you go. As a matter of fact, I heard a crying man is half a man with no sense of pride. But if I have to cry to keep you, Lord, I don't mind weeping if it will keep you by my side. You understand that persistency and humility pays off. And at some point in time, you have to be willing uh, to cry out. And when folk try to silence your witness, your prayer, your petition, and your praise, you have to cry out that much more. For the Bible says that the Lord heard his cry. The one who was blind, the one who could not see, but he could hear that the Lord was passing by. Now gets the attention of the Lord. The Lord perhaps did not see him initially, but the Lord heard him cry out. And the Lord responded to his prayer. And the Lord asked of him, what is it that you desire? And he said, if I could see. And the Lord says, get up my brother, because your faith has brought unto you what your heart desired. What am I trying to say? I, I want to encourage somebody that just like on Tuesday mornings, we can't see one another. But thanks be to God, we can hear one another. And you may not can trace God. And you might not can put your hand on God. But that doesn't mean that God's hand is not on you. That you may not can see God. But you surely can hear his voice. And you surely can hear God's will through Jesus. All I'm trying to say is in the midst of your darkness, in the midst of your silence, the Lord is still speaking through song and prayer, through preaching and proclamation. And if you can acknowledge that the Lord is nigh, and if you are willing to respond in faith, the Lord will hear your plea. And the Lord will move. The Lord will bless. I wonder if there's anybody in here and a few folk out there who can declare, I was ditched in dark, left in utter darkness, couldn't find my way. Not a familiar face in sight, but I heard the voice of God. He lifted my spirit and lifted my joy, and that's why I cried out, Lord, save me, sinking deep in sin, far from peace for sure, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea, he heard my despairing cry. And up out of the waters, up out of the deep, up out of the darkness, 
he lifted me now save him I I can't see him but I can hear him and his word declares salvation is of the Lord his word says that God so loved this dying world God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believe shall be saved redeemed regenerated forevermore I heard the lightning flashes seen it y'all and heard the thunder roar but I'm so glad in the midst of the storm in the midst of my situation I heard the Prince of Peace I heard Mary's baby bright and morning star the rose of Sharon said peace be still I heard his voice said come unto me all who labor and heavy laden and I will I will give you peace lift your weights lift your burdens aren't you glad that although you can't see him you can hear his voice so lift up your voice make a joyful noise cry out to God Lord hear me see me save me and he will he will he will hear your precious plea your earnest cry and you can declare bless the Lord oh my soul in all that is within me I will bless the Lord in spite of my blindness my brokenness my burden and he will respond so sing unto the Lord a new song he heard my cry he stopped by pitied my groan met my every need won't he will say yes hallelujah glory to his name thank you Jesus for speaking thank you Jesus for shouting out thank you Jesus for showing up thank you Jesus for hear my prayer prayer hear my cry thank you Lord hear me now again again David David says I, I love the Lord because he heard my cry I don't know if he saw me but he heard me but listen the blind man who could not see could hear not only could he hear but he could speak he made use of what he still possessed could not see, but he could hear, and he could speak, so he cried out. And the Bible says that Jesus responded to what he heard and then saw him. Keep shouting until God sees you. We know we're all under God's watchful eye, but keep crying out until the favor of God is poured out upon you. That's all I have this morning. All I'm trying to say is that's right. You may not can see God, but that does not mean that God does not exist. You may not can see the Lord Jesus Christ. That does not mean that the Lord Jesus Christ does not exist. Because guess what? You can still hear the Lord's voice in spirit. You can still hear the Lord's voice in word. You can still hear the Lord's voice through proclamation. This is not human enterprise. This is God's word that we believe in faith has been given unto us as a treasure. And it's a living word and God speaks through it. So that although you may not see the Lord, you, you are still able to hear him. And if you respond in prayer, in petition, in praise, the Lord will respond unto your need. Thank you, Jesus.
Perhaps there's someone out there. I hope I did not get in your way today. If so, God, forgive me. But perhaps there's someone out there who felt as if they had been dumped or ditched along the roadside. Everybody seems to be passing by in haste to make their way to their destination. A few may attend to you, but a, the few that give you a few coins have not been able to fix your situation. If you're there, but you've heard from the Lord today, the Lord is saying, come on then, get up. Matter of fact, the church is saying, as the Bible says, the disciples said, get up. He's calling you. See, the Lord is calling you. The Lord is calling you because he heard your cry. He heard you crying out, have mercy on me. Now the Lord is asking, what is it that you desire? Do you desire to be free? Do you desire to be free? Do you, do, do, do you desire to live out your life in the name of the Lord? Be your authentic self. No longer chained, no longer bound by other folks' judgment and, and other folks' expectations of you. No longer bound by the chains of whatever been holding you physically or some type of substance or chemically. Whatever it is, the Lord is saying, respond right now. You can't see the Lord, but you have heard from him. And this is the day of salvation. Do your part and come. Respond. You can hit us up right now in the message board, or you can reach out to us at ubbcpastor at comcast.net, at unionbranch at comcast.net. You can stop by during the week at 11519 River Road or call us right now at 804-590-2210. We'd love to have you to join this fellowship as well. Why don't you come on and consider connecting with this body of Christ as we're looking for the Lord to take us to higher heights in his service. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the Lord's name. Don't do it without me. We need 
our hearts have been touched and encouraged on this morning. So let us go before the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you. Thank you, God, for sharing with us that even though we may have afflictions, that even though times may be hard, even though we may feel impaired or inadequate, Lord, you still have given us things to be able to yet still seek your face. Oh God, stir within us, Lord. Stir within your people hope. Stir within us, Lord, a sense of urgency to no longer wait and lay in the muck and the mire. But Lord, may you allow us to experience, Lord, the joy of salvation. Lord, the knowing that we're worthy of being delivered, worthy of being set free, worthy of freedom and joy and love and hope. Oh God, we pray for all of those, Lord, that find themselves struggling on today. All of those, Lord, who find themselves weeping, God. Oh God, be with them this week. Yes, God. Speak a special word into their ears. Yes. We lift up to you the Colbert family, Lord. Be with them, Lord, as they remember the life of their loved one. Oh God. Be with them this week, Lord. Let them know that your peace and your peace alone will pass all understanding. And that that same peace will guard their hearts, Lord, and guard their minds. Be with them, Lord. May your presence rest, rule, and abide with all those who are struggling. All those, Lord, who find themselves in need. Lord, we lift up to you, God. We lift up to you. Those that are in those tough places. And Lord, even though they may not be able to see your face. Lord, may they speak a word out to you, Lord. Yes, knowing, Lord, full well that you'll hear their voice. Hear our voice on this day. Yes. Hear our cries unto you, Lord. May you give us the courage that when you ask us what is that that you have need of, that we'd be honest and truthful. Yes. That we'd actually speak out that thing that we really need the most. May we not be bashful before you, Lord, but may we be authentic and honest and tell you that which is in the recesses of our hearts. So, Lord, we bless this congregation on today. Lord, we bless those, Lord, that that are such, um, that find themselves, Lord, just wanting to know you more and, Lord, wanting to seek your face deeper. We just pray, Lord, that you would be with all of those who are seeking your face whether they be part of this body officially or not. Lord, may you hear their prayer and may you hear their cry. So, Lord, we thank you for today's service. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us on this day. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with music, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us with worship and with song. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to worship you in giving. Lord, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to hear your word preached And Lord, we praise you, Lord, because our hearts have received that which you've given. Lord, now let us go into this world around us, Lord, and not just be selfish and keep those blessings to ourselves, but may we go into this world now, Lord, and be your vessels of truth, to be your vessels of honor, Lord, to be your vessels of integrity and of righteousness. And may we share that which you've shared with us, Lord. And may we give it out, Lord, 30, 60, and 100 fold. Lord, knowing that when we give out, Lord, you're going to give it right back to us. Press down, shaking together, and running over. Lord, we thank you for this service, and we thank you for this day. And we say, Lord, we will bless your name at all times, and that your praise will forever be on our lips. And it is in the precious name. In the matchless name of Jesus, we do pray, and for your sake, amen and amen. Have a wonderful day, everyone, and go in peace. Bless
perseguir 